Stand by for Space Cadet in 30 seconds. Kellogg's Raisin Bran has a secret. Kellogg's Raisin Bran has a secret. Yes, Kellogg's brings you the secret of a more delicious breakfast treat. It's new, it's excellent. It's Kellogg's Raisin Bran, both fruit and cereal, all in one box. You get plump, tender raisins dipped in honeycomb, along with delicious golden crisp bran flakes. So try the new fruit and cereal combination. Get Kellogg's Raisin Bran because Kellogg's Raisin Bran has a secret. And now, Kellogg's Corn Flakes, the cereal that helps you have more punch till lunch, invites you to rocket into the future with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Stand by to raise ship. Blast off. Minus five... Four, three, two, one, zero! As roaring rockets blast off to distant planets and far-flung stars, we take you to the age of the conquest of space with... Tom Corbett, Space Cadet! Some 200 miles above the surface of the Earth, near the extreme limits of the atmosphere, a sleek new rocket hurtles at terrific speed through the inky darkness of space. Inside the rocket, two figures, one in the uniform of a solar guard captain and the other in the trim garb of a space cadet, stare intently at the bewildering array of buttons, lights, and meters that make up the ship's control panel. Check the course sector, Tom. On course, Captain Strong. And good. Well, this ship handles pretty well. What's the altitude reading? In atmosphere, 0.17. All right. Check Mr. Franklin on the radar bridge and see if he's finished taking his reading. Aye, sir. Control deck to radar bridge. Franklin here. Cadet Tom Corbett, sir. We're approaching atmosphere ceiling. Captain Strong wants to know if you've finished your reading. Yes, you can take her down now. Aye, sir. On full rocket power, of course. Full rocket power, sir? That's what I said. Is he out of his mind? We can't dive through the Earth's atmosphere at full speed. Even if we don't burn up, the ship will fall apart. I heard that, Captain Strong, and I assume you heard my orders. I heard them, but I don't understand them, Mr. Franklin. Diving at full velocity from this altitude is suicide. You know the ship would never hold together. I'm coming below. I'll see to it personally. Now, wait, sir. Mr. Franklin... He's broken the connection, Captain. I'm afraid he meant what he said. Crazy inventor. He must have space fever. I don't know, sir. After all, he knows the structure of this rocket better than we do. Maybe it will hold. Yeah, maybe it won't. I don't want to risk all our lives on a wild chance like that. You contact Commander Arkwright at Space Academy, Tom. Hi, sir. Uh, just, just a minute, uh, Cadet Corbett. No radio messages. Now, look here, Mr. You Franklin. look here, Captain Strong. Your orders were very clear. You're not to break radio silence during this flight. Neither am I required to rocket dive this ship through atmosphere on your station. Captain Strong, I was given to understand that your orders from Arkwright were to put yourself at my service throughout this test, to carry out the various maneuvers I order, and to maintain strict radio silence. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And your orders, Cadet Corbett? The same, sir. The orders seem clear enough to me. I've asked for a rocket dive, and that's exactly what I want. Mr. Franklin, believe me, this ship won't hold together for a rocket dive. You have no idea how many ships have been lost just that way. Not ships of this type, Captain. You haven't been told this before, but most of its major structural parts are vanadium steel alloys. Vanadium alloys? Well, but there's so little known about them. Well, you sound as if you know the metal carpet. Well, just from my classes, Mr. Franklin. But I didn't think there was enough known vanadium on Earth to build a jet boat, much less a whole ship. That's true. But I've discovered a large deposit of nearly pure vanadium on one of Jupiter's satellites. I ought to be exact. I see. If this test is successful, we can get all the vanadium we need to make our spaceship considerably stronger without adding an ounce of weight. And if the test fails... Oh, I assure you it won't fail, Captain. I'm ordering you to alter course for Earth under full rocket power. Very well. Sit down and fasten your safety belt, Mr. Franklin. That's better. All secure? Secure. Ready with one and four, Tom. One and four ready, sir. Fire one. Fire four. Ready with two and three. Two and three ready. Fire two. Fire three. All right.
rockets firing, sir. Diving speed 1970.3. Good. Now refocus the viewing plate. There. What a sight. Why, the Earth seems to be rushing up to meet us. Diving speed 2678.7. I sure hope you're right about this vanadium alloy of yours, Mr. Franklin, because when we try to pull out of this, the strain will be fantastic. We'll soon know. What's the altitude? Altitude 101.75. I'll get ready to pull her out. Altitude 78.9. 69.0, 62.7, 58.7. Here we go. Baseman's luck. What was that? Well, it felt like a stabilizer. Quick, Tom, focus the app scanner on the tail assembly. Yes, sir. Hurry up. Captain Strong. Well, what is it? Look, the left stabilizer's torn away. If it took the inner vein along, we're out of control. We'll crash. <laughs> And there goes Tom Corbett headed straight into another adventure in space. One thing about Tom, though, he's always ready for anything, and that's no accident either. Tom Corbett takes care of himself. Plenty of exercise, the proper rest, and lots of quick energy food, especially at morning chow. You can bet Tom Corbett and all the space cadets start every day with a good, nourishing breakfast built around Kellogg's Corn Flakes. That's right, fellas and girls. A good breakfast built around Kellogg's Corn Flakes is real quick food energy. Helps you blast off in a hurry and helps keep you zooming right up till noon. And that Kellogg's Corn Flakes flavor right out of this world. You can say that again, Tom. And remember, fellas and girls, with Kellogg's Corn Flakes, you're not only enjoying that swell Kellogg flavor, you're helping yourself to more punch till lunch. More punch till lunch. More punch till lunch. Eat Kellogg's Corn Flakes. While testing an experimental rocket ship under the direct orders of John Franklin, its inventor, Tom Corbett and Captain Strong are amazed to learn that the final test maneuver is to be a dive into the Earth's atmosphere at full rocket power. As the ship dives at incredible speed, a stabilizer and steering vane is torn away, and the ship plummets toward Earth, hopelessly out of control. Altitude 21.4. The ship is getting hot. The air friction is terrific. Pull up, pull up. Come down tail first and then give full rocket power. I can't. It doesn't respond. The mechanism is jammed. We're going to hit any second. Hang on. There's not much time. This is it. Well, this is far enough, Tom. To be safe from the flames here. Yes, sir. Uh, are you all right, Franklin? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, strong. Not a scratch. Uh, just luck, that's all. Oh, you you found out now. Yes, that, that all the parts of the ship that were made of vanadium alloy withstood the terrific pressure of that rocket pullout and crash. But what about the tail assembly? The section that came apart? Well, that corporate was made of conventional materials. And it was the only part of the ship that did give way. Yeah, that was enough. It's a miracle we're able to walk away from oh, this. No, Captain Strong. The miracle is that there never need be another crash like this. Once we get enough vanadium, all spaceships will be able to withstand stresses never before dreamed of. Well, if that's true, Mr. Franklin, I guess it was worth the risk. Yes, I'm going to report my findings at once. An expedition to Io must be arranged. We'll find all the vanadium there we'll ever need. Electronic interceptor, Lamar. Right. It's a mighty handy gadget for overhearing conversations, Walt. I've always thought so, Lamar. A man in my business can find many uses for it. You don't have to tell me. But what did you make of all Franklin's talk about vanadium? What do I make of it? Hmm. A fortune, that's all. A fortune. I don't know how you figure that. You couldn't organize a mining expedition to I.O. before the government does. Those solar reliance babies move fast. Of course not. But we're not going to mine that vanadium ourselves. We'll let the government have that unpleasant shore. I see. Then you ship it here from Isle. Exactly, Lamar. Uh, I'm not without influence, you know. And since you're a first-class spaceman, I can arrange to have you put in charge of the freighter that hauls the first shipment. Huh? 
That will take some doing, believe me. I can handle it. Okay, but then what? Once that vanadium leaves Io, it will be in your hands. And you're working for me. Well, Tom, there it is. The I.O. Vanadian mining operation in full blast. Oh, golly, Captain Strong. I never thought I'd see activity like this on I.O. Well, to tell you the truth, neither did I. Well, say, there's Mr. Franklin. He's coming to meet us. Oh. Gentlemen, welcome to Io. It's good to see you again. Thank you, sir. Well, this is quite a project. Oh, uh, yes, we're making amazing progress. Well, look down there in that valley, Captain Strong. See how those huge machines really tear the place apart? Oh, they're efficient, that's for yeah. sure. The very latest thing in mining equipment. As you can see, the, the they blow a jet of compressed gas that drips down to the ore deposits in no time at all. Very impressive, Mr. Franklin. How soon will the first shipment be ready? It's ready now. That's why I sent for you. Oh, <laughs> say, you people haven't wasted any time. There's no time to waste, Captain. The sooner we get this stuff back to Earth, the sooner we can put an end to structural failures in spaceships. Yes, I understand that all right. But why the solar guards? Because at this moment, vanadium is not only the most expensive, but the most wanted material in the universe. So it's up to you to see that nothing happens to this first shipment. I see. And how are you going to freight this metal back to work? Well, I'll let Captain Lamar explain all that. Lamar, sir? Yes, he's in charge of the freighter. Uh, come along with me to Operations Jack, and he'll brief you. Now then, Lamar, uh, uh, suppose you explain the operational procedure to Captain Strong and Cadet Corbett. Okay, it's uh, simple enough. My uh, ship is loaded and ready for blast off. Your patrol ship will act as escort. We raise ship at 0700. Now, let's see, that's uh, 25 minutes from now. Can you make it? Sure. The Polaris is ready to blast off right now. Good. I'm carrying a big load. I'll have to use full fuel capacity to break free of I.O. with that string of loaded barges. Well, do you mean you're going to tow that long string of barges through space? Why not? Those barges won't cause us any trouble once we're outside the gravitational pull of I.O. Well, but well, what about landing on Earth? They won't have any braking action. And we've made allowances for that, Strong. I'll head for Space Station One. A fleet of smaller ships will meet us there to transfer the cargo and ferry it down the rest of the way. I'll refuel at the Space Station. Oh, mm -hmm. And what about your course? I'll determine the exact course when we're in free fall. We'll be in constant radio contact. I'll give you the course then. Very well. When do you want the Polaris to blast off? Uh, at 0655, just five minutes before I do. We'll rendezvous in an orbit exactly 150 miles above Io. Now, are there any questions? I don't think so. Tom, alert Manning and Astro. Aye, aye, sir. Gentlemen, we're making history. The first full shipment of pure vanadium is on its way to Earth. <laughs> Calling space freighter L.C. Joe. Come in. This is Lamar. Cadet Corbett here, sir. Rendezvous completed. Good. Can you tune us in on your viewplate? Well, we've already done that, sir. We can see your ship now. Okay. Put Captain Strong on. He wants to talk to you, Captain. All right. Strong speaking. Now, here's our course. By your space chart. Coordinates X7155 by C6509. Now check that, Tom. Aye, aye, Captain. I want the Polaris in sight of it throughout the entire trip, Strong. Oh, don't worry. We'll be there. Well, Captain Strong... There must be some mistake. What do you mean, Tom? Well, look at this chart. At this time, the sun is between Jupiter and Earth. According to the course Lamar just gave us, we'll pass so close to the sun that we'll roast. Well, let me see that chart. Here, I've marked the course. Well, you're right, Tom. Uh, Lamar? Yes, what is it? You've made an error in plotting the course. This one will take us too close to the sun. There's been no error, Strong. Those are Mr. Franklin's orders. We we'll get to Earth by the most direct route. But if we go that close to the sun, we'll risk power failure, not to mention our own hide. Now, just a minute, Strong. This is Franklin speaking. Yes, Mr. Franklin. I'm a little tired of your questioning of my orders. You forced me to remind you that I'm in full charge of this operation. And you'll do what you're told, or I'll see to it personally that you're court-martialed. Do I make myself clear? Very clear, Mr. Franklin. Now, don't worry about being drawn into the sun, Strong. I've made careful calculations. Our speed will keep us from falling into its orbit. I hope you're right, Lamar. Is that all for us now? Yes. End transmission. Well, Captain, they certainly like to make things tough for us, don't they? Yes, Tom. The worst part of it is, if we're right, we'll never live to prove it.
We're quite close to the sun, Tom. Keep a careful check of our orbit and our velocity. Yes, sir. Are we maintaining our speed, Captain Strong? Yes, so far. But I'll breathe a lot easier when we get through this. So will I. Wait a minute. Hey, that's funny. What's the matter, Tom? Well, the viewer keeps clouding up. I can't make out the other ship. Let me see. Well, those are probably gaseous clouds. They're all around us now. We're out of visual contact, sir. Oh, wait a minute. We will spot the ship again when we pull out of this gas cloud. Now well, it's thinning out a bit now. There. We're through it. But but where's the freighter? That's strange. We lost it. Tom, I don't like this. Neither do I, sir. We'd better raise them on the radio. They may have shifted course. Yes, go ahead. Get them. Polaris calling freighter Elsie Joe. Come in. Polaris calling Elsie Joe. Come in. What's the matter? I don't know, sir. That is impossible here near the sun. I don't get their signal yet. No, keep calling. You should hear it, even with all that static. Polaris calling Elsie Joe. Can you read us? Come in. Come in, please. Why in blazes don't they answer? Well, check your meters, Tom. Maybe we're not transmitting. Oh, there's nothing wrong with the transmitter, sir. They just don't answer. Sunspots could be interfering with the reception. Uh, try the radar track. Yes, sir. No signal. Well, try the other quadrant. Yes, sir. Still nothing. Where in the universe are they? I can make a pretty good guess, Tom. Captain Strong, you don't think they were drawn into the sun? Barges and all. That's just what I think. Great. Galaxy. If that's happened, sir, it's the last anyone will ever hear of them or their cargo of vanadium. And now, all you future space cadets, boys and girls, let's take time out for a question in our Kellogg's Cornflake Space Quiz to test your knowledge of space and the universe. Here's our question. What planet is it that is often seen shining brilliantly in the east about sunrise? The name of that planet is Venus. Now, here's another question. Along about sunrise, what cereal is seen on breakfast tables the world over? The answer to that one is Kellogg's Corn Flakes. You know, Kellogg's Corn Flakes is the favorite ready-to-eat cereal of the whole universe. And it's because of that famous Kellogg's flavor. The way Kellogg's special toasting process brings out all the sweet, lively corn flavor in each golden flake makes each flake crisp and tender. It's the kind of flavor that brings you back for seconds. Keeps you reaching for that box of Kellogg's Corn Flakes time after time, morning after morning. So make sure you get the one and only Kellogg's Corn Flakes. While Tom Corbett and Captain Strong in the Polaris are escorting a space freighter bound for Earth with a valuable cargo of vanadium... They lose contact with the freighter as they enter the gravitational field of the sun. Puzzled, they return to Space Academy on Earth, where they make a full report to Commander Arkwright. Well, Captain Strong, it seems that you and your cadet crew really pulled yourselves a prize bonus this time. Commander, I can't let Captain Strong take the blame for something that wasn't his fault. Captain Lamar insisted on that course, and Mr. Franklin backed him up. Strong, is that true? Yes, sir. Franklin threatened me with a court-martial if I didn't carry out his orders to the letter. I see. Captain Strong went as far as he dared, sir. But our orders were to place ourselves at Mr. Franklin's disposal. Yes, I know. I think I can understand the predicament you were in. And I wish I could say we'll forget all about it. But unfortunately, that's impossible now. Impossible, sir? How come? I've just received a special communique from Central Government Headquarters. Here, let me read you this paragraph. Loss of vanadium shipment appears to have been result of improper navigation. Captain and navigator of escorting ship are directed held for general court-martial. General court-martial? Oh, no. That directed leaves me no alternative. But a general court, sir. It wasn't any fault Save of Save your but... explanations for the trial, Cadet Corbett. Yes, sir. You will return to your quarters, and until further notice, place yourselves under room arrest. That is all, gentlemen. Dismissed. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Tom. Oh, Captain Strong. Aren't you confined to quarters, sir? Yes, but I have Commander Arkwright's permission to visit you, Tom. I want to thank you. 
thank me, sir? Oh, for the way you stuck your neck out for me in the commander's office. I was only telling the truth, oh, sir. I know, but I'm sorry it had to work out this way for you, Tom. You're a good cadet. And I want you to know I'll have plenty to say on your behalf at the trial. I don't see why there has to be a trial, sir. What will they gain by making goats out of us? Oh, I can understand it, Tom. That Vanadian shipment was priority one stuff. I don't think the authorities would have minded so much if there was any chance of getting it back, but well, to lose it into the sun because of a navigational error. Yes, sir. I guess it looked pretty bad to them, all right. Well, I suppose we should start planning our defense for the trial, but somehow I haven't got the heart for it. I know how you feel, sir. Attention, all academy. Attention. Uh-oh, what's this? Captain Strong and Cadet Tom Corbett come up to the commander's office on the double. Well, that's us, Tom. Come on. I wonder what's happened now. You think maybe they've decided to shoot us for spies? Strong and Corbett. I'll get to the point quickly. We have good reason to believe now that the vanadium and the space freighter that carried it were not lost in the sun at all. What's that, sir? But we were there, Commander. We practically saw it happen. I've just reread your deposition, and you both agree that neither one of you actually saw the ship fall. Well, that's true, Commander. According to your report, the ship was last seen disappearing into a cloud of gaseous matter. All right, sir, but that's where we lost contact. Then we can assume that the cargo was not lost. Not lost? No. Oh. Matter of fact, large quantities of it have begun to appear on the black market here on Earth. Black market? By the moon of Mars, it sounds as if we were hijacked. In my considered opinion, you were. That would explain Lamar's rather puzzling choice of a course. Do you mean Lamar was in with them, sir? I believe he was. The thing must have been carefully planned to make use of the sunspots and gas clouds so as to ensure loss of all contact with the escorting ship. Well, that seems to figure all right. Well, anyway, this development frees me of my obligation to hold you two for trial. You are both released to resume normal duty at once. Oh, Commander, how can we thank you? No need to thank me, Cadet Corbett. To let you in on a secret, I'm just as pleased as you are. That is all. Dismissed. <laughs> Miss the next action-packed adventure with Tom Corbett and the space cadet when Tom and the other cadet members of his unit place themselves in mortal danger when they go looking for the vanadium hijackers in the black void of space. Tune in same time, same station for the next thrilling interplanetary adventure with Tom Corbett, space cadet. Brought to you by Kellogg's Corn Flakes, the cereal that helps you have more punch to lunch. Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, starring Frankie Thomas, also appears in the comic sections of many of Canada's leading newspapers. Look for a daily and in weekend edition. Featured in the cast are Al Markham as Astro, Jan Merlin as Roger Manning, and Edward Bryce as Captain Strong. Today's program was directed by Drex Hines. Jackson Beck speaking. The whole day starts out better when breakfast is fun. And one way to make breakfast fun is to have a different cereal every morning. How? That's easy. Easy for Mom, too. Ask her to get Kellogg's Variety Pack. Kellogg's Variety Pack is an assortment of cereals. Ten individual size boxes in one handy carton. And each individual box holds exactly one generous serving of a favorite Kellogg cereal. Yes, in Kellogg's Variety, they're all favorite cereals. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, Pep, Rice Krispies, and the new favorite Kellogg's Corn Pops, to mention just four. And each serving stays extra crisp and fresh because it's in its own individual package. So just for fun, make breakfast fun. Ask Mom to get Canada's only cereal assortment, Kellogg's Variety Pack. Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal, invites you to rocket into the future with... 
Check, Astro. Check, Tom. As I was saying, when... Hold it, Manning. Something's coming through the news facsimile receiver. It's just a news bulletin. Listen to this. Central government hints at new clues in the mysterious disappearance of special cargo ship. New clues? Space gas. Now look, Roger. Oh, don't mind, Roger. Tom, go ahead. It has been less than a week since the space freighter Elsie Joe disappeared near the sun, loaded with an invaluable cargo of nearly pure vanadium. Already large quantities of the precious alloy have appeared in the black market on Earth. Is that what they call a new clue? Well, I could have told Hold you. Hold on a minute. Sources close to the central government now believe that the cargo freighter was hijacked, and an immediate investigation will be launched to establish the identity of the hijackers. Now, I ask you, what kind of double talk is that? You've read the whole bulletin, and we still don't know any more than when you started. Nobody expects you to know anything, Bubblehead. I wonder if they really have any leads. I can answer that for you, gentlemen. Captain Strong. Why, right, these men... I see you've been reading the facsimile bulletin. Yes, sir. They claim there's some fresh evidence on that hijacking job. Yeah, there is. I just came from a briefing in Commander Arkwright's office where we were told that a small, privately owned rocket ship has been reported ferrying the vanadium in from a hiding place somewhere near the sun. Well, sir, are they sure it's the same vanadium that was on the freighter? Well, it has to be, Tom. They've checked the vanadium mining operation on I.O., and the only quantity of the stuff that's unaccounted for is the load that disappeared under our nose. I still don't see how they pulled off that job. It's pretty clear to me... Captain Lamar was in with those hijackers. That's why he picked that crazy course and took his ship so close to the sun. Very good, Manning. That's the way Central Intelligence figures it. Of course, we'll never know for sure unless we catch them. What are our orders, sir? Is the Polaris going to try to track down that private ship? Right, Tom. Have you men completed your checkup? Yes, Yes, sir. Good. Then prepare to blast off. We raise ship in ten minutes. What have you got, Manning? Spaceship, sir. Third quadrant. Position 2150. Solar guard or merchant? Neither, sir. It looks like the one we're after. Well, patch it down here. I want to see the scanner. Hi, right, sir. You've got it. Here, sir. It's in focus now. Yes. That's our baby, all right. Call them, Tom. Tell them to prepare for boarders. Yes, sir. Polaris calling. Identify yourself and stand by for a boarding party. Spacecraft in position 2150. Identify yourself and stand by for an inspection party. Oh, they're not answering, sir. Manning, alter course to intercept them. Aye, sir. Control deck to power deck. Stand by, Astro. We may need auxiliary power for maneuvering. Stand by, sir. Captain Strong, they're making a lateral sweep and firing auxiliary rockets. Astro, give me full space speed. Manning, keep the fix on them. We can overtake them. Well, no, sir, we can't. They're pulling away. Well, it's impossible. We're at top speed. Just the same, sir. They're getting away. She's too fast for us. We can't overhaul her. We'll return to the exciting adventures of Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, in just a moment. So stand by. Spaceman? Suppose you were blasting off on a long trip to the outer planets. Well, you'd be mighty sure to check your ship over thoroughly. You'd make sure you had enough rocket fuel to get you there and back again. And you'd check your supplies, too, to make sure that you had the right kind of food on board to help keep you strong and healthy. Now, listen to what Tom Corbett says about that. Before each trip, our food locker on the Polaris is well stocked with Kellogg's Pep, Spaceman. And you can bet it's just about empty by the time we get back. Kellogg's Pelt, Pep, helps to keep the whole crew supplied with the vitamins and food values everybody needs to build up strength and to keep up strength. So if you want to stay in trim, 
The way the space cadets do, take a tip from me. Start your day the spaceman's way with a heaping bowl full of Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal. And spaceman, wait till you taste the multi-rich wheat flavor of Kellogg's Pep. Why, you say the best-tasting cereal in the whole wide universe is Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P. Rocket cruiser Polaris attempts to intercept an unidentified spaceship suspected of burying vanadium that has been hijacked from a government freighter. But to the utter surprise and chagrin of the Polaris crew, the renegade craft easily outdistances them and disappears. It's no use, Captain Strong. She's so fast we can't even get a fix on her anymore. It's incredible. I never saw anything like the way that ship pulled away from us. It was those auxiliary rockets she carries that did it. That must be the fastest spaceship in the universe. You're not just blowing your jets, Roger. That ship can really move. Tom, get out a general CQ to all patrol ships. Tell them to be on the lookout for that craft. Aye, sir. Polaris to all patrol ships. Polaris to all patrol ships. Watch for unidentified spaceship, believed to be the vanadium hijackers, moving at extremely high speed. Course undetermined. If any patrol ship does spot her, Captain Strong, how are they going to overhaul her? I don't know, Astro, but we'll have to find a way. Well, if we could isolate that ship in some single quadrant, Captain, one of our craft might be able to shoot her down. That's what I had in mind, Roger. I can check the Ryan, calling the Polaris. Oh, here comes something, Captain. We read you, Orion. Go ahead. I just spotted the unidentified craft, coordinate 61, 45, 67, by 43, 44, 22. Check those coordinates, Roger. Yes, sir. You were right about her speed. Our attempt to overhaul her failed. She refused to answer our ID request and we lost touch. We're going to maintain the search. Thanks, Orion. Keep us posted. Spaceman's luck. End transmission. Sir, with their report and ours, I think I've got a fix on her course. Well, where's she headed, Manning? At the moment, sir, right toward the sun. All right, men. Prepare to alter course. We're going to follow her in as far as she goes. I presume you heard that conversation between the Solar Guard ships. Yes, and I don't like it, Lamar. Two ships reporting our position gives them a fix on our course. Shall we alter it and head for outer space? No. We won't be caught if we don't lose our heads. How far are we from our base now? Uh, at this speed, some seven hours or so. All right, hold the course. We'll go there and hold up until it's safe to freight more of that vanadium back to Earth. But what if they track us to our base? The chances are pretty slim that they can do that, Lamar. But if they do? That will be too bad for them. Because if they do, they'll never live to report it. Captain Strong, that's that. Nothing to report. It looks like a clean getaway for those hijackers. I wonder, Tom. Say, Astro, let's see that space chart again. Here you are, sir. Now, according to the fix we had on that ship, it was headed toward the sun. Right, Manning? Yes, sir. Not far from where the cargo ship was hijacked. You'd almost think they had their base on the sun. That's impossible. Look, Bubblehead, you don't have to tell me that. Now, look, look here on the chart, fellas. At the present time, the sun lies directly between us and only one other planet. Mercury. Right, Tom. And since the L.C. Joe was hijacked very close to the sun, wouldn't it seem logical that the hijacker's base would be relatively close by? Well, that makes sense to me. Sure. Now, it looks to me as if we scared them, so they put on full speed and headed for their base, which is probably near here someplace. Sounds right. And if true, they shouldn't be too hard to find. Well, how can you say that, Captain? Mercury has a diameter of over 3,000 miles. Yes, but they couldn't hide their base on the sunlit side of Mercury. The heat of the sun would be too much. Also, they would be detected too easily. Well, they'd hardly set up a secret base in the Twilight Zone. That's the only place on the planet where there are any colonies. Exactly, Astro, which leaves us only the dark side of the planet to search. Now, my guess is their base will be hidden there. Probably as close to the Twilight Zone as possible. The dark side of Mercury. Oh, that's about as cold as Pluto. Yeah, it's not exactly a pleasant place, but that's where we're going to have a look. If I'd have known this, I'd have worn my electrothermal underwear. Cut your jets, Roger. This is serious business. 
All right, men. Get to your stations. We're headed for Mercury. Well, Lamar, have you picked up anything? Yeah, a ship just came within range of our base radar wall. They're headed this way. Uh Uh-oh. I was afraid of that. By its contours, I guess it's the Polaris. Polaris, eh? That strong ship. We've got to be careful of them. He's got a pretty good cadet crew. I know. The Polaris was our escort ship when we pulled this job. I almost didn't shake them. How long will it take them to get here? Well, they should be in this latitude in another ten minutes. Of course, they may pass right over. After all, this base is pretty well hidden. Don't be a fool, Lamar. Our huts are bound to lose some heat no matter how well insulated. This makes it possible for their sensitive detectors to locate our base while still hundreds of miles away. Well, then what can we do? I've got a little surprise for them. Look here, Lamar. Ever see one of these? Looks like an electron beam projector. Right. It's an old weapon, but a good one. It will short out any electric circuit in a radius of as much as a mile. But that's no good against the Polaris world. Every rocket ship in the last 50 years has had counter-equipment triggered by the beam itself. I know that, but I'm not going to use it against the ship, Lamar. I'm going to use it on the crew. We'll see what I mean when the time comes. I won't have long to wait, then. Look at that screen. Oh, they're entering the dark zone. What's their altitude? Uh, down about 60 miles. They've reduced speed, too. They're searching for our base. Okay, let them find it. We'll be ready for them. Any reaction from the screen, Tom? Not yet, Captain. I'm adjusting the scanner now. Ah, here we are. Well? The detector indicates heat, sir, in small quantities, such as might escape from an insulated building. Good. We've located their base. Put her on automatic stabilizer, Tom. We're going... Landing completed, Captain. Now, good work, Astro. Come on up here. Tom, what about that heat source? Well, we're somewhere within a thousand yards of it, sir. You can't see a thing out there. How are we going to find it? On foot, Roger. All right, men, break out the pressurized suits. All right, sir. Let's go, fellas. And Tom. Yes, sir? And break out that special survival kit, too. We'd better take it along with us. Right. Now then, let's have a check. Uh, sidearms, infrared spot. Oh, I have that, sir. Portable radar. Right here, sir. Survival kit. I'll take that. Now, recheck the heating and pressure units in your suits. We wouldn't be able to walk with all this junk if the gravity were anything to speak of. Out there, without this junk, as you call it, Roger, we wouldn't survive more than five minutes. Now, stand by to open the airlock. There they are, Walt. Coming out of the Polaris airlock now. All right, Lamar. Turn on the beam projector. Here it goes. Let it warm up before you focus the beam. It'll be ready in a minute. But you still didn't explain what you're going to do with it. Let me get at that viewplate. Yeah. This has to be focused exactly right. Give me the precise range. The ship or the crew? The crew, of course. Uh, 250 yards. Good. Well within the most effective range. It should work perfectly. But that beam isn't powerful enough to stop a man at any range over ten yards. No, but it's effective enough to short out the heating units in their space suits. The heating units? Sure. Without those, how long do you think they can be active out there? By Jupiter, they wouldn't last long. What an idea. All right, Lamar, stand by. Just a few more yards, and we'll let them happen. All right, men. Keep close together. Don't get separated in this darkness. Will you listen to that wind? This is worse than Pluto. At least it's quiet there. The detector indicates the heat source is over this way a few degrees, sir. All right, Tom. Flash the spotlight that way, Astro. Aye, sir. Huh. Still no sign of anything. Well, they'll have it well camouflaged. You can bet on that. Keep your weapons ready. They may be tracking us. The signal's at maximum, sir. We must be within a few yards of it. Wait, Astro. Don't move the spot. I just saw something. A flash of metal. Very neat. But well, the ship must be concealed around here somewhere, too. Probably underground. Hey, you know something, fellas? Imagination's a funny thing. Even in this insulated suit, I'm starting to feel cold. You're space happy, Roger. How can you get cold with a heating unit in your suit? Hey, I don't feel exactly warm myself. Hold it up, men. Something's gone wrong. Oh, 
What is it, sir? Our heating units aren't functioning. I'm beginning to feel cold myself. What about you, Astro? Yes, sir. I, I hate to admit it, but I feel it, too. Well, the heating units have conked out. What are we going to do, sir? If we stay out here much longer, we'll freeze to death. We'll return to the exciting adventures of Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, in just a moment. So stand by. Listen to the pound of those giant drivers sending that locomotive speeding down the main line. Well, that's only one of the 16 exciting action pictures you can see in the Magic Moving Picture Eye series. And you get a Magic Eye free at no extra cost in every package of Kellogg's Pep. How would you like to see William Holden, star of Paramount Pictures' Submarine Command, send up the periscope of the submarine and give the signal to fire the torpedo? Well, there's a magic eye that shows you just that. And there are other magic eyes that show you more movie stars and trains, jet planes, and other exciting pictures. Sixteen different magic eyes altogether. Why, there's even a magic eye showing tennis star Bobby Riggs playing in a big game. You want to collect all 16 different magic eyes, so start now. Remember, you get a magic eye free at no extra cost in every package of the build-up wheat cereal, Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P. Pep. In the merciless cold of the dark side of Mercury, where the temperature stands at almost absolute zero... Four figures huddled together against a howling gale. Their spacesuits rendered useless as protection against the elements. Now that the vanadium hijackers have caused the heating units in them to cease operation. For a moment they remain motionless in stunned realization of their plight. And then with a mighty effort, Captain Strong forces himself to move. The kit. I've got to get it open. What's that, sir? The survival kit. What good is the survival kit now? It can... It can save our lives... If I can rip it open. There. Yeah, that does it. I, I'm numb. Here. Emergency batteries. Quick, Tom. Attach this to your, to your heating unit mechanism. Yes, sir. There's one for you, Astro. Manning. And I've got one, too. My fingers. They're so stiff I can hardly move them. Hurry. Hurry. There's no time to lose. There. I. Yes. I've got it. I've got mine, too. Oh, my feet. Your, your extremities may hurt for a minute as, as the circulation starts again, but it won't last too long. My ears feel like they're going to drop off. Great galaxy, I didn't know how cold a man could be. So we'll be all right soon. Not for long. These are only emergency batteries. Well, then we'd better get back to the ship fast. Not yet. We've still got a, a chance to capture those men. How, sir? Roger. Mastro, lie down on the ground here. You say lie down, sir? Yes, it, it, as though you'd collapsed. Come on now, be quick. We've got to work fast. Okay, sir. Come on, Roger. Hit the deck. Now we're going to try to trap these men out in the open. When they spot you two lying here, they'll, they'll be sure you collapsed from the cold. They'll think that Tom and I are somewhere behind you. Oh, I get it, sir. Astro and I are the decoys. That's right. Now when they come out here to investigate... We'll be ready for them. Sounds like it might work at that. It's got to work. All right, Tom. You come with me. Yes, sir. But what if those men don't show up before these emergency batteries go dead? Well, that's the chance we've got to take. All right, Lamar. You can shut off that beam now. Okay, Wald. That should take care of our visitors. Now we'll have a look. Get into your spacesuit. I want you to go out there and find them. Me? Oh, no thanks, Wald. What do you mean, no thanks? That's an order. I don't care what it is. I'm not setting foot out of here alone. Oh, so that's what's on your mind. You don't trust me, eh? You think I'll try to do away with you? You guess it. Now, why would I want to do that, Lamar? Because you don't need me anymore, that's why. You needed me to hijack that vanadium and help you establish the base here. But now things are getting hot, and I happen to be the only one who can put the finger on Oh, you. you're crazy. Am I? 
Don't forget I saw what happened to Franklin. I had to get rid of him. The easiest way was to dump him in space. Well, I'm not going to make things so easy for you. Okay, if you feel that way, break out my space suit, too. We'll go out there together. I'm afraid our trap's not going to work, Captain Strong. Yeah, it's beginning to look like it, Tom. Now, we can't make, wait much longer. These emergency batteries will conk out any minute now. Hold it, sir. What is it? Look over there. That big boulder. Say, well, for a second it seemed to be moving. It is moving, sir. Look, it's the entrance to their underground hideout. Two men are coming out. Stay down and keep them covered. Don't worry, sir. I sure will. Don't make a move now. Hey, they're going over toward Astro and Manning. That's just what I was hoping they'd do. Now we can move in behind them. Come on, Tom. I'm with you, sir. Loosen their space suits, Lamar. Make sure they're finished. Okay, well, you keep looking for those other two. That won't be necessary, mister. We're right behind you. Strong, drop those weapons. We've got you covered. Astro, Manning, disarm them. Right. You heard the orders. I'll take those guns. All right, you got it. I'll say we have, and we've got the vanadium, too. Good work, men. Step on it now. Let's get them aboard the Polaris. Yeah. I want to be where it's nice and warm when these batteries go dead. Roger, this is one time you and I agree completely. Don't miss the next action-packed adventure with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. An adventure in which the cadet crew of the Polaris face death in space as the victims of willful sabotage in an interplanetary space tournament. Tune in, same time, same station, for the next thrilling interplanetary adventure with... Tom Corbett, Space Cadet! Brought to you by Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal. Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, starring Frankie Thomas, can also be seen on television and appears in the comic sections of many of America's leading newspapers. Look for it daily and in weekend editions. Featured in the cast were Al Markham, Jan Merlin, Edward Bryce, and James McCallion. Today's program was written by Gil Braun and directed by Drex Hines. Jackson Beck speaking. Kellogg's Raisin Bran has a secret. Kellogg's Raisin Bran has a secret. And what a secret. In Kellogg's Raisin Bran, the tasty raisins are dipped in honeycomb. That means plumper, more tender raisins, along with delicious golden crisp bran flakes. Both fruit and cereal, all in one box. And no other raisin bran but Kellogg's gives you the tender goodness of raisins dipped in honeycomb. That's Kellogg's secret. So for your breakfast, make sure you get Kellogg's, because... Kellogg's Raisin Bran has a secret. Kellogg's Raisin Bran has a secret.